Hola. Oh, hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you after. Sounds good. Is my connection okay? Ted, like, it seems a little, just a little blurry for let some me, Let me come off and come back on. It seems like it's <laughs> off as well. Give me a second. Okay. That ain't any better. It's the same. It's weird. Is there a, does there a delay at all? No. Nope. Okay. As long as there's no delay, then I'm good. I'm good with blurry. I look better blurrier in the dark anyway. So it's good. Did you ever buy a new computer? Uh, I'm. This is my backup. I haven't gotten another one yet. Okay. Maybe for Christmas I'll get one. Uh, that was last week, buddy. Oh, I missed that. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna. All right. All good. <clears throat> All right. Good evening. Anybody with me yet? Give me a thumbs up or a hello if you guys can see me. Who's who's in the house tonight so far? There's everybody. Hey, Brandy, how are you doing? Belinda, how are you up in Canada? Hey, Tonda in Virginia, how are you? Lance, how are you guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Denise, hey, Lorna, how are you guys doing? Hey, Kirsten, good to see you again. <laughs> uh, Taryn, hey, good to see you. Good to be with everybody tonight. Hope everybody's doing well. Hey, Miss Lynn, good to see you too. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Jason, hope you guys are good. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Hey, Barb, how are you doing? We'll give everybody a minute and then we'll get jumping right into this. This is our first Wealthy Wednesday of 2023. Holy cow, is it really 2023? That's not okay. <laughs> Happy New Year, Sue. Oh, hey, Julianne, how are you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Miss Sue. Good to see you. All right. Well, you know what? I see that we're here. I don't see that we're on Facebook yet, though. Let's see. Let's make sure we're live. Yeah, we're live on there. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get started. It's good to be with you guys all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first um, Wealthy Wednesday of 2023. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I hope everybody's doing great. I'm excited about what 2023 is going to bring to all of us man you know we all have so much potential and so many opportunities it's all about taking advantage of those opportunities and just being consistent and achieving the goals that we want so here's what we're going to do what we're going to do tonight is a little different i'm going to talk to you a little bit it's 2023 i'm sure a lot of you have new year's resolutions and goals that you want to achieve and in, in, in this year so i'm going to ask you to type in uh, some of the goals that you want to achieve in 2023. I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk about health and then I'm going to answer questions. I really want to leave a lot of time tonight to answer as many questions as you all have, um, you know, about about really anything when it comes to health uh, and, and wellness. So so first of all, uh, type in some of your your resolutions if you have some. I want to know what it is that you're really you know, wanting to achieve or accomplish in, in 2023. And I thought it was interesting. I just did a radio show 
on this topic recently, and we we were talking about, you know, the top out of the top 10 New Year's resolutions, seven of them this year have to do with health. It's interesting how the rest of them have to do with wealth. And what we talk about on Wealthy Wednesdays is health and wealth. So it really truly is something that people, you know, are very interested in. And, and you guys know as well as I do that health has always been a very valuable topic and a very important topic to discuss. But um, <laughs> ever since, uh, I'll let's just say the year 2020, it seems like it's a very, uh, very hot topic. Um, if you, um, <laughs> if you, if you really, really, really want to get into it. So what I want to talk a little bit about, and if you have questions, go put them in, put them in the Q&A so that I can see them. I can't always see them in the chat. And those of you that are on Facebook, if you guys want to have somebody jump on and 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 hit the, the questions in here, I'll answer them as well. Uh, or I'll try to do our best to go on Facebook and answer them later. But uh, maybe you have a friend that's in uh, the chat with us and you can text them and say, hey, ask Dr. E this question. So, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, I'm reading some of the comments and they're really good. I really, 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 really love. And, you know, I agree. I'm not a big New Year's resolution person, but I'm a big goal setter. I'm big on setting intentions and I'm big on action steps to achieve those intentions. So you call them New Year's resolutions, you call them whatever you want. What is it that you want to accomplish? And a lot of us have health goals. And I'll tell you, I've spent, um, well, you know, the last several days in practice after the new year and we have so many people that have goals that they want to achieve and so many of their goals has to do with health. So I want to just talk a little bit uh, about, um, about health, uh, about 2023, about what I'm excited for. We have so many things that are coming. The, the reset, I know many of you are talking about, we've got so many things when it comes to metabolic boosting and, 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 and energy boosting and, and weight loss and metabolic reset. It, we're, we're so close to launching a few things with you that are going to be really, I, I'm just excited about uh, that we're bringing to really the, the, the marketplace in the world. So I want to talk to you a little bit about health. You know, we talk about health. We're a health and wellness organization, a health and wellness company. But, you know, we talk about health, but most people don't really know what health is. You know, and, and and this last week, I've you know, I've I've talked to hundreds of people about their health and their goals for their health. And what's interesting to me is that so many people focus on looking better and feeling better. Well, I want you to look better and feel better, but I want you to function better. If your body's functioning better, then you're going to look better, you're going to feel better, um, and you're going to be a healthier, happier person. Period. So I want you to understand that health is not just about looking good and feeling good. It's about functionality. And those of you, some of you are saying one of your New Year's resolutions is you want a face-to-face -face, you know, appointment with me. Come down to St. Louis. We're happy to do it. I, I, I'm happy to serve you guys. We're really happy to do it. But, but health is all about balance. And it's a balance in the physical well-being of your body, the chemical well-being of the body, and the neuro-emotional well-being. It's a triad of health. The, the Larry, Moe, and Curly, the three stooges of health is what I like to call it. And we talk a lot about the chemical component, about the supplements, right? And, and about food choices. But health is mental, emotional. Health is physical. Health is chemical as well. So a lot of people get frustrated if they're just doing a physical uh, program to, you know, exercise or stretch or whatever, and they don't they don't achieve their goals of whether it's weight loss or reversing high blood pressure or getting their blood sugar under control or or whatnot. And the same thing's true. I I, I can't tell you how many how many um, uh, consultations I have with patients that are taking vitamins and. And, and, you know, they're, they're spending a lot of time, energy and resources on their supplements they use, but they're not healthier because they haven't made lifestyle changes. You see, I want to make sure that when we have a conversation with each other and when we have a conversation with, well, with, with other people in the community and we're sharing what we do with them, that we talk about not just the nutritional products, but about a lifestyle of health and wellness. So I want you to take some notes. I want you to listen to what we've got to say tonight. I'm going to be brief in my comments, and then I'm going to answer questions. So go in the Q&A and type in your question there, and I'll answer them tonight. 
But the first thing I, I want to talk about when it's when when it comes to health, we already talked about health is a balance of three things: physical, chemical, and emotional well-being. Well, health starts with what you put in your body. You know, we talk about eating to be well. You know, we have we have, in my opinion, my humble opinion, some of the absolute best nutritional products on the planet. Period. The fact that we can make customized nutrition based off of your own individual genetic uh, uh, imbalances and stresses is a game changer. I mean, that is a dream come true for most functional medicine doctors. You know, we draw blood and then we prescribe supplements and different things based off of that blood. But it's all these different bottles of supplements based off of your blood, whereas our nutrition is the one product that you need that covers the vast majority of the problems that you've got from an imbalance standpoint that's affecting you on a genetic level. So that's a no-brainer. And we have our gut triad is ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous what we have in that gut formula. The, the prebiotic and the postbiotic by itself and the strong anti-inflammatory that we've got with that combination of those three, it's a game changer. We talk about how important supporting your DNA is, but also supporting your bacterial DNA. There, there, are, there are so many more bacterial cells in and on your body than there are human cells. So we truly are, you know, more of our environment than we are human cells. You know, our DNA has viruses in it. Our body has bacteria in it and on it. And the healthier that bacteria is, the healthier we are as a whole. The problem is, is that we're not really educated. We're not educated hardly at all how to take care of this beautiful body. I mean, many of you have bought a new car, a VCR. Do people buy VCRs? I don't think they buy those anymore. I don't know what they get. What do people get? I guess CD players. They probably didn't get that anymore. Live stream. Well, whatever you get, you get a user's manual and they teach you how to take care of it, how to clean it, how to service it, what to put in it, what not to put in it. You got all these warnings. Wouldn't it be nice to have a user's manual for you? And that's what the nutrition allows you to get an opportunity to do. The testing, the genetic testing helps you get a really a, a path forward for you of your baseline of where you should be with your nutrition. And you look at the rest of our product line. I mean, my gosh, our, our coffee formula, which by the way, you know, it's a coffee, but it's a brain beverage. That's what I tell my patients. This is a brain beverage. Oh, you're having trouble focusing, concentrating. You're having trouble, you know, having energy. You're having trouble because you're craving foods all the time. You know, there's a certain products that are out there right now that are nootropics that are getting a lot of play on the internet, but they don't have the delivery system that we have. And I will put ours up against anybody's. So we've got the amazing products for the brain and the amazing products for the, for the immune system and, and detoxification. We truly have a little bit of everything uh, that our bodies need, but you cannot out supplement a poor diet. So it's important that you understand that what you put in your body and what you put on your body has a tremendous amount to do with your health. And so how should we? Well, everybody's a little uniquely different. Variety is really the key. But the reality is, is that most people do well. Most adults do really well with a Mediterranean slash keto type diet. So what is that? It's real food. Real food. What's real food? Fruits, vegetables, meats, good fats, real foods. You know, like if you go to the grocery store, you should shop around the outside of the grocery store, you know, not the, the aisles where they carry all the, you know, processed grains and carbohydrates and junk, the outside where the live produce is. And we should eat a Mediterranean keto type diet. We should do the best we can to consistently eat that way. And if we do that, we're going to have a better chance of being healthier, whatever that looks like for you. Everybody's body's uniquely different and genetically different. But if you don't do that, then you're going to have the standard American diet, the SAD diet that leads to all the symptoms and sickness and disease that we have as a country. Uh, I mean, if you go to other countries and eat a baguette or bread there, like if you go to Europe, you don't feel as bloated and as extended and as, as 
as fat, if you will, as you do if you have that same food in America. There are over a thousand, a thousand chemicals that are approved here to be used in our food and on our body that you can't use in other countries. So if you're not mindful about your foods, then you're not, you can't be healthy the way that you want to be healthy. And I'll tell you, it's not just what you eat, but when you eat. Most of the adults that are on here, unless you are a world-class athlete or trying to put on muscle uh, weight and strength, you really need to be eating on an intermittent fasting type of a protocol. And most people are going to get the best benefit if they're doing an 18-hour fast out of a day, 18 hours of fasting and six hours of meal time. I typically, Monday through Friday, I get up in the morning, I have my coffee, uh, black, I don't put anything really in it for the most part. I'll have some of my supplements in the morning. Um, and then I'll have water or green tea or maybe a second cup of coffee throughout the day. And then I typically have something to eat for energy, probably around two o'clock, sometimes three o'clock. And then when I get home around seven is when I have my, my last meal of the day. And that's what I typically do Monday through Friday. And yes, you can do that. Even if you're a diabetic or even if you're, you, you've got other health issues, it's very healthy for you to do that. It might be difficult at first, but eventually your body will shift from a sugar burner to a fat burner by doing that. And that's a game changer for people. We should also hydrate for health. You can't out supplement the fact that you're not hydrating. You know, I can't tell you how many people we see that have fatigue anxiety, chronic pain, blood sugar issues, and high blood pressure because they are chronically dehydrated. Now, many of you say, well, I don't like water. That's because your palate is used to drinking sweets, sodas, sugary food, juices, etc. You can shift that. Start using living water. Start, start every day, take some water, put a squeeze of lemon in it, put some pink Himalayan salt in that water, uh, put some of your supplements in there, drink that down during the day. And that will help you immensely start craving that. I crave uh, salty lemon water now. It's so beneficial. It's true electrolytes. You will start getting more energy if you'll drink that. It's real electrolytes. And that'll help your body burn fat. That'll help you not crave as much sugary stuff. You'll, 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 your metabolism will go up. Your skin will clean up and your body will function better if you do that. But we've got to hydrate proper. And how much water a day should we drink? Well, everybody is just a little bit different. Everybody's body's a little unique. But a good rule of thumb is take your body weight, divide it by two, that's how many ounces of, of, of healthy fluids you should have a day. And, and most people are going to be ideally around 80 to 100 ounces of fluids a day. So if you'll incorporate that into your lifestyle, that's healthy. And by the way, when you start getting healthier, you get more energy. When you have more energy, you're more productive in life. When you have more energy, you want to work out. When you have more energy, you want to spend more time with your kids and your spouse. And maybe even you want to be more productive in your social life or at work. I mean, all these things can be improved upon by just making little tweaks. See, people are, are, are more apt to spend $150 or $180 a month on supplements, which, by the way, makes sense to me. But that's not going to overcome the fact that you're not eating a balanced meal plan and that you're not you're not hydrating. Now, listen, consistency is the key. Consistency absolutely is the key. But think about this. There's seven days in a week. If you're consistent, the majority of those days, you're going to do really well. You know, think about it from like a baseball standpoint. If you're up to bat seven times and, and you get on base three out of seven times, that's like a 400 plus batting average. That gets you in the Hall of Fame. If three days out of seven, you're spot on with your foods and your water and your nutrition and your movement, that's going to really move the dial for you. What I've experienced is once you start getting, you know, maybe three days in, now your body starts craving more. Because see what's happened, and this is a law of physics, Einstein told us this, something that is in motion stays in motion. Something that's not in motion does not stay in motion. And speaking of motion, that's the third thing that we have to talk about motion, moving the body, 
the number one nutrient for your brain, the number one nutrient to move the lymphatic, the garbage out of your body, the number one thing you can do to keep your cells engaged is movement. A guy by the name of Roger Sperry won a Nobel Prize in the 1980s. And they found that that movement, moving the body is the number one nutrition for the brain. And we live in a society now where movement is not um, is not as as uh, basically culturally appropriate as it used to be. I mean, look at people in the 1970s versus now. Look how much more they moved and, and how more sedentary we are. And the reality of it is, is that that's part of our lifestyle and culture. But we as a society need to break through that because even though our culture has changed, our genetics and our DNA of our body, the way God made it, has not. We're made to be moving creatures. And if you wanted to generate your body quickly, then, then stop moving. So movement is the key. You know, sleeping is another important habit. And, and I'm one of those folks that used to say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But the reality of it is, is that you're just going to be dead a lot quicker. Research is very, very clear on this. The human body needs about eight hours. Some people need about seven. Others need nine hours of sleep. And there's people in between there. But that's the majority of adults. Now, the older we get and the younger we are, the more sleep that we need in life. And if you're not sleeping properly, you're not healing properly. And I'm telling you the two main things that I find with people, the two main things that I find with people that causes them not to sleep, number one, they're nutritionally deficient, which typically also leads to toxicities because your body's got to have something in it. If you don't have the right nutrients, bugs, bacteria, parasites, viruses, all this stuff, heavy metals will fill our cells. If we fill it with the right nutrition, we have less of an opportunity for those to get in our body. So nutritional deficiencies and dehydration causes us not to be able to, to sleep proper. Plus, also, if you're not moving your body, you see, your body needs to get energy burned off of it. And I'm going to tell you something. It's really important to get some movement activity in your body during what we call transition periods. Transition periods are periods where you go from, for example, when my kids come home from school, we don't have them do their homework straight away. What we do is we say, why don't you, you got an hour or so, go go play, like my daughter, my, my nine-year-old, in the summertime, well, not in the summertime, I guess in the spring and the fall, she was actually doing it this week because it was unseasonably warm uh, in Missouri uh, even though, you know, the weather tried to kill us the week before, uh, it went from like negative six to 60. No wonder your sinuses and allergies and your joints hurt, right? But we would have her go out. We bought a trampoline for her because jumping on a trampoline or doing jumping jacks or walking or moving burns cortisol, which is the stress hormone. It burns it off a part of your brain called the hippocampus. If you can't think properly, if you're stuck in a rut or you're stressed out, Go and move your body for 15 to 20 minutes. Go exercise, go for a walk, go jump on a trampoline, go do some jump rope or jumping jacks. You'll burn that cortisol off your hippocampus. And now you can transition into the next thing with a smooth transition without any problems. So sleeping is the key. And we have assistance with that. We have supplements that'll help with the body rest and get into deep sleep without having to take a medication. So we got to eat well, we got to move well. We got to sleep well. We got to hydrate well, but we also have to, we also have to think well. You guys know that that um, that uh, <laughs> what we think about, we bring about. You all know as well as I do that when we're stressed out, physically, chemically, or emotionally, we feel that in our body. If you're emotionally stressed out, you you just don't physically feel good. Your pain's going to be higher. If you're emotionally stressed out, your energy's in the crapper. You can break that cycle by doing what we're talking about, and you can control your thoughts. I I, I was just reminded, I wrote it down, um, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has given us the spirit, for, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have the ability to control our thoughts and our emotions. We really do. Sometimes we need a, what I call a checkup from the neck up. 
But if you will, I'll tell you some things you can do. You guys, a lot of times when you see me in public, I'm always smiling. Because when you're smiling, what that does, you cannot smile. Everybody just do this. Everybody just do this. I'm going to look at you. You're going to look at me. And we're going to smile at each other for the next 10 seconds. So let's just smile. You got pretty teeth. Even if you don't have teeth, you got a pretty tooth. If you don't got teeth, you got pretty gums. Just smile. Because when you smile, what happens is your brain starts to automatically produce certain neurotransmitters in the gut and in the brain to make you feel good. And you get, you get endorphins, you get feel good chemicals in your body. I have on, at my offices, we have little post-it notes on the, on the phones that says, smile, you're on the phone because it's, when you smile, there's just something different about you. The energy is different and you get to control that. See, we're not taught enough about the power of our energy and how it affects us and how our energy affects other people. You have the ability to make that change and you quite honestly, you have the responsibility to do it as well. And the, the, these, every one of these topics I'm talking about is, 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 uh, we could do a whole class on each one of these. And I have done classes on each of these. So we got to eat well, we got to move well, we got to think well, we got to hydrate well, we got to sleep well, and you've got to supplement well. Listen, I'm just going to tell you, people that say to me, well, I'd rather get my vitamins and nutrients from my food. Please show me in today's world how that's possible. I don't believe that it is. I really don't. Now, I think you should eat well. I think you should try to eat as clean as you can. You should have a diet that's got fiber in it. You should have a lot of vegetables, minimize your, your fruits, uh, but you still should have fruit in moderation. You should have a lot of good, healthy fat. If you are a meat eater like me, you should have good, healthy, clean meat. I like, uh, I like organic, grass-fed, grass-finished, all that kind of stuff if you can. But in the world we live in today, the soil and the the agricultural landscape of the world, we don't have the nutrients in our foods like we even did five years ago, let alone today. So if you're not supplementing, you can't heal. I mean, so many people get so frustrated because I run, I run blood tests and genetics and all this stuff on folks, and I find deficiencies on almost everybody. I find them on myself, which is why I check my levels on a regular basis. It's almost impossible, not, not totally impossible, but it's almost impossible to get your nutrients, all the nutrients you need from your foods. Like, for example, if you need potassium, the average adult American, the average adult across the globe needs 4,700 milligrams. That's 4,700 milligrams a day of potassium. That's about seven cups of dark leafy green vegetables a day. Are you all eating seven cups of dark leafy green vegetables a day? I do it most days, but not every day. It's a big salad. I mean, a big one, right? And maybe two big salads a day. But if you're not eating that much potassium and it's, you got to eat it, but you also have to have that in your, 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 it's got to be quality organic food. But then, but then also, you know, you got to be able to absorb it. And most people don't absorb their nutrients. They don't chew it up enough. They don't have enzyme production. So if you're not supplementing, there's no way that you can get yourself healthy. Trust me, I, I agree. I, I, I wish that we didn't have to be on, you know, three, four, five, sometimes six or more different supplements. But because of our stress, because of our lifestyle, and because of the inadequacies of our foods, if we don't supplement, we're going to get sick. We're going to have dis-ease and then disease. Look, it's real simple. If you are deficient in certain vitamins, you're going to develop diseases. Look at look at this. If you're deficient in vitamin C, what are you going to develop? Scurvy, right? Connective soft tissue issues. You're going to get really saggy skin. You're going to get rotten gums. You're going to get sore joints. You're going to get all kinds of you know ligament instability because you're deficient in vitamin C. If you're deficient in in things like vitamin D, you can get rickets. You know, your bones can can be weak and they can break easy. You got joint pain real bad. Osteomyelasia, which is joint pain, it gets confused with, uh, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis all the time. A lot of times it's a vitamin D deficiency. So if you're not getting enough of the nutrients that your body needs, that your genetics are looking for, your genes, the blueprint is, is looking for this certain nutrient, this vitamin, this protein to make your body healthy. If you don't have it in there, it's just not going to work. So. Don't be frustrated with your results if all you're doing with your health is, is, is just supplementing. You know, we need or just trying to eat or just exercise. We need all of those together. So, so um, 
we got it. We, we've got we've got a supplement in our lifestyle, and we have an amazing opportunity to have the right supplement for you based off of your genetics. Because the genes that we test are not epigenes; they don't turn on and turn off. These are our finite, important genes that once we have them, we have them, and so we test and then we treat according to our genetic imbalances, which everybody understands that once you explain it to them, they go, yeah, that makes total sense. It's customized nutrition based off of my own body's needs. And everybody's body's a little different, which is why if you take nutrition and you give it to somebody else, that's not going to help them because it's specifically formulated for you, which is really a powerful thing. Very powerful thing. And if you're not supplementing with gut health, you're, you're just, I mean, I, I cannot impress upon you the importance of the importance of, um, I mean, having that, if you don't support your gut, you're not, your health is nowhere where it's supposed to be. It can't be. So you got to think well, eat well, move well, sleep well, and you'll be well. But I want to talk a little bit about goals and then I'm going to shut up for a minute. And then I'm going to answer any of the questions that you all have. So put them in the Q and a below and I'll do my best to answer them, but let's talk about goals. So goals need to be what we call smart goals. They need to be S M A R T. So the S is a goal needs to be specific. Like, for example, I want to lose 20 pounds. That's a real specific number. 20 pounds. That's a specific goal. It, 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 that's the S. It, it, it also needs to be measurable. Well, you can measure that. You can weigh yourself, you know, at the end of every week and, and you can get an idea of where you're at. I don't encourage people to weigh themselves every day. That's just torture. I'm not a big fan of weight. Uh, you know, I, I recently dropped... Uh, about 12 pounds of fat, but then I put on about 10 pounds of muscle. And so I'm about where I was before. Right. So, so it's not about your weight. It's about your, your health. Right. So you gotta have a, a smart goal. It's gotta be specific. It's gotta be measurable. You gotta be able to measure it. You gotta be able to track it. Right. So it's gotta be uh, specific, measurable. The A is attainable. It has to be something that you can attain. I mean, if you don't have 20 pounds to lose, then you don't need to lose 20 pounds. You know, I, I'm I'm five foot ten on a good day. A goal for me cannot be I want to be the the center for the New York Knicks basketball team. It's probably not going to happen. You know, I'm a little over the age of a basketball player, and I don't know too many centers that are five foot ten. So that's not a that's not a attainable or realistic goal, right? Which is the the next part. The R in the smart is realistic. Can you realistically achieve this goal? And then the last thing is you need to put a time frame on it. Because, you know, you ask and you shall receive. You know, you knock and it's going to be open. But you got to learn how to ask the right questions. So putting out there a, a smart goal would be, okay, in the next six months, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. That's a realistic, that's a specific, measurable, attainable, realistic goal with a time frame on it. That's how we need to put our goals together. And let me tell you something about goals. They're powerful and they're important. I, I write my goals down. I put them on my phone. I actually have a, a goal list on my phone and I, I look at it uh, all the time. I mean, my goals are right here. Every time I open up my phone, it's there. This is what I want. Boom. And, and so you've got to have your goals written down. And you got to look at them on a regular basis and you got to check yourself. You know, most people can commit to as long as they can commit to. And you know what I mean by that. Think about this. You know, right now it's, it's, it's early 2023. You know, as well as I do, the gyms are busy as all get out January and February. And unless they convert the gym to a pizza parlor or a bar, uh, once March hits, it's usually pretty dead in there, right? So, so you need to have, you need to have some type of a emotional connection of why you do it. So one of the things that I tell people all the time is write your reasons why, write your goals down, but also have your reasons why, you know, and if you can write five to 10 reasons why you want to do something, you'll start it. If you can write 20 reasons why you're going to stick with it for a while. If you can write more than 25 reasons of why you're doing something, you're most likely going to achieve that goal. But you got to look at it regularly. You got to believe that it's going to happen. And you need to engage the emotional aspect of it. I don't know if you know this about the human body and the brain, but logic and rational thinking doesn't really move the dial. 
I mean, y'all probably noticed that in your life, especially over the last couple of years, but logic and logic and reason don't really move the dial as much as emotions do. Get emotionally engaged with your goals. Feel them. Literally feel it. Feel like, man, you've you've lost that 20 pounds. You're looking in the mirror and you're feeling what it looks like to, to, to have accomplished your goal. You're walking around and people are complimenting you and saying, hey, have you lost weight? You look great. You know, all these things. Get yourself in that emotional in that emotional state and you'll have a better chance of achieving that that goal. I mean, that's just the way that it is. And then check yourself. You know, most people can, like I said, can commit to 90 days of doing something. If you can't commit to 90 days, commit to, to, to 30 days. If you can't commit to 30 days, commit to 14. If you can't commit to 14, do seven. And if you can't commit to seven, at least try to win the day. And like I was saying before, like I was saying before, if, if out of seven days a week, if three out of seven, you're, you're winning your goals, you're going to be pretty good. You're going to be starting that momentum uh, into going from three to four to five to six to seven and, and, and onward from there. So, you know, these are things that I really want to, I really want to hope that you all are engaging me with this because we've got some major goals for this organization for 2023. I've got some major goals for myself in 2023 and I'm going to achieve them. I'm going to attain them. We're going to win 2023 is the year that's going to set us free. And, and that means a lot to me. And I've got an emotional connection to that phrase and that saying and that slang. And, 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 and I'm telling you, you too can achieve the same results, but you just got to be willing to put in the work. So, all right. I've been talking enough. 830. I got about, about 25 more minutes with you guys. I want to answer questions. Do me a favor, put them in the Q&A, write down what questions you've got about anything. I want to make this about you. And by the way, one of the things that I'm asking, and I'm asking again for this, get me a list of the topics that you want to cover. If you have specific topics that you want me to go over, if you want me to start doing every week, we'll talk about thyroid this week, weight loss this week, you know, GI problems this week, heart issues this week. We'll talk about all those things and how what we do helps with it and how lifestyle can change it. I'm happy to do that, but I need engagement from you. So let's get into the Q&A right here. So what we got? Questions. Um, more info on that hot topic of metabolic reset. So we are in the final stages. In fact, it's almost completely done of having a program for all of you to have and use. Uh, there's a program that I've done for almost 15 years in my practices. And we, we tweaked it about six years ago and then tweaked it again about three years ago. And then I just recently tweaked it again to be more of a gut health uh, metabolic reset, uh, uh, just to really, quite honestly, this last year. And we're really excited to launch it. We're waiting for a few other things to fall into place so that we can make it happen. Because when we launch this, we know it's going to be big. We know it's going to be really big, uh, but it's a program that's going to help you reset your gut bacteria, reset your metabolic syndrome. I'm going to teach you about your body type, how to eat for your body type, um, how to recognize what exercise are best for your body type, give you more of a customized protocol of you. You know, think about this. If you know your body type and you know your, your DNA and what you should be supplementing, you're, you're, you're going to be way ahead of the curve with, with so many things. Okay. So more to come on that. Great question. Uh, another question, sorry, there's a lot of them coming in right now. Another question, uh, Lynn says, the Juve coffee fact sheet talks about it containing protein. However, the supplement fact table says it's less than one gram and one and 0%. Can you please elaborate on how the coffee qualifies as a protein? Okay, so because it has, because of some of the nutrients that are in it, it's going to have some proteins in it. It's not enough to be considered a dietary protein use supplement or et cetera. You have to understand to be, to be um, uh, in compliant with the FDA and the regulators that are out there, there's a lot of things on nutrition labels that sometimes don't make sense to people. Um, and this is one of those things. There's protein in it, and it is with the, 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 some of the compounds that are in that, that uh, formula with the coffee but it's not enough to be considered like a protein shake or a protein beverage or anything like that. It's a insignificant amount of protein. It's not going to, trust me, I have checked this on 
well over 100 patients plus myself, if you use the Juve coffee and you just drink it black with some water in it, like most of us do, it does not cause a spike in your blood sugar or your insulin. So the protein in it is a non is a non issue. It's literally less than one percent. It's not even we're talking about. Um, but that's why it says that in there. Um, Lori says I use the tri I sorry I use the triad and custom nutrition daily. Eat keto, drink tons of water, living water all day. Have but have foot and ankle cramps at night. Uh, what do you? What do I need to look into? Well. Great question. Health is physical, chemical, and neuroemotional. There could be physical imbalances in your body. Your ankle, the, where the heel bone and the ankle bone come together, it's called the mortise joint. That joint is supposed to be really mobile. And there's supposed to be a little gap between the spaces in there. You could very well have compression physically in that joint that doesn't allow circulation to happen. Your calf muscle and your soleus muscle, which is the muscle that's deep inside the calf right next to the, to the lower leg bone on the back of your leg, every time that muscle moves, it's called the second heart, the soleus is. And it pumps fluid back up from the feet back up to the body. A lot of times if people are, and I'm not saying this is, this is you or anybody, but if you've got chronic low back issues, hip problems, uh, joint imbalances in the ankle and mortise joint, have a history of, of hurting the ankle joints, rolling them regularly, or et cetera. Or if you have a history of, or you currently are overweight, that can add that excess pressure there so that when you, when you walk, that soleus muscle does not pump like it's supposed to. And that's going to lead to cramping and et cetera, primarily in the nighttime and evening time. One thing you can start doing to help with this when you are at rest, if you're done for the day, put your feet up above your heart, lay on the couch or chair, have your feet up above your heart and pump your feet back and forth, pump your feet back and forth. And that can help you pull that fluid and also stretching the calf muscles and the soleus muscles. Go, go online, go to YouTube and look up calf and soleus muscle stretches. That could be extremely beneficial for you. That really will help you a ton. So please do that. And if there's physical imbalances, you guys know I'm a little partial because I am a, also a doctor of chiropractic. So seeing a chiropractor, especially seeing one regularly, can be a game changer for you. But movement is the key. Look at this. Are you, are you eating well? Are you supplementing well? Are you hydrating well? Are you breathing well? Are, are you thinking well? Are you doing all the things that we talked about? Movement includes stretching. You know, if you, if you would have told me when I was 21, 22 years old playing, you know, college football, that the first thing I'm going to do when I'm 40 years old in the morning is stretch out before I leave for the day, I thought you're crazy. Old man, I'm not going to be stretching. I stretch out every stinking day because the more mobile your joints are and muscles are, the healthier you are. By the way, the more flexible you are, the more flexible your arteries are and your cardiovascular system is healthier. So. This young lady said, yeah, I do have chronic low back pain, hip and weight issues. So that's where that's coming from. Health is balanced, physical, chemical, and emotional. You, you very well could have, let me tell you something. There's something called emotional back pain. You could have chronic low back pain because there's an emotional stressor that goes with it. So the reality of it is if you're not looking at all of the aspects of health, then you're really not, you're really not getting truly healthy. You can get healthier by eating better and sleeping better and, you know, doing one or two of the things we talk about, but in order to really achieve health and to maximize the function of our body, it's all about prioritizing our time, our schedule around us. That's one thing in 2023, just so you know, one of the things that I've really changed, you know, the last three years I've been running ragged across the country. I mean, trying to save this world <laughs> and educate people. But the reality is, is that, that I decided that in 2023, I'm going to make it more about me. I'm, I've got certain things on my schedule now, my routine that's more for me, for self-help and self-healing. If you don't take care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. You know, they always talk about like on an airplane, if the oxygen mask deploys from the ceiling, put your mask on first and then help the person next to you. Because if you can't help yourself, you're not going to be around to help other people. 
and for folks like me and a lot of you that are here that are very well for the most part selfless but are selfish on some things my wife's watching she could probably attest to that love you babe but um but it's hard for us sometimes to put ourselves ahead of what we would perceive as others. But the reality of it is if you're not eating well and exercising well and sleeping well and hydrating well, then, then you can't, you can't possibly help others. So if you're, if you're here tonight and you're saying, you know what, I, I, I just, I'm so frustrated because I tell people about how great these products are and about how great what we're doing in this company is. But if you aren't being the example you're not going to get the results that that you really, you know, want to have when you communicate with folks. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are getting anything out of this. You guys learning anything tonight? Is this good so far? Good way to start the the new year. You guys happy with where we're at? Good. Any final thoughts? Good. I'm I'm glad. Good. I'm glad you guys are getting something out. Of it. Any final thoughts? Questions? You know, I want to I want to leave with this too. If you have any questions, type them in and I'll hit it. But I want to know what is it that you want to learn more about. I need you to get that information to me so that I can customize. I want to know what you're wanting to learn about. I want to know about what your clients and customers want to learn about because then I can gear these classes and talks more towards that. So do that for me. And I appreciate all you guys for, for giving me thumbs up and, and all the love there. Um, question just came in. says, can you talk about more ways to combat anxiety, panic attacks, depression, including seasonal depression, uh, when already taking the triad, and working on diet and supplements. Yeah, of course. So first of all, diet is huge. Research has shown, current research has shown that the quality of the health of your gut and your microbiome determines the quality and health of your brain and your emotional state. Uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, the Amen Institute, I studied with him for years. And one of the things that we always talked about was the fact that if you have a leaky gut, you're going to have a leaky brain. And that most people that have anxiety and depression and all these other things going on, you got to first change their diet. And then you got to get their body moving. If you just change their diet, got them the right supplements, got the body moving, you know, a fair amount of time, if people are consistent with it, they're going to get the result that they need. So the first thing I would say is check the diet tweak the diet. If you're eating things like, you know, red dyes, pastas, a lot of sugars and sweets, processed foods, things that are GMO, a lot of people get, they don't have food allergies and food sensitivities. They have GMO and glyphosate or glyphosate imbalances. They have too much of that stuff in their body. And, and so getting detoxifying your body from that and then moving moving the body you know especially doing deep diaphragmatic breathing exercises you know anything that you can do to stimulate the vagus nerve is going to help you potentially with anxiety and depression the vagus nerve is the key nerve to stimulating the parasympathetic part of the brain that's the part of the brain that helps you rest relax grow develop and heal so i mean again you can go to youtube and and look up you know, uh, vagus nerve exercises. You can gargle with water that stimulates the vagus nerve. You can do humming exercises. You can do deep breathing exercises, diaphragmatic breathing, exercise movements will help with that. Certain stretches can help with that. Going to the chiropractor, getting adjusted, going to the gym, all these things can stimulate the vagus nerve. Remember, 10% of the vagus nerve is in the upper cervical spine, but 90% of it is in the GI tract. So the better you take care of your gut, the better you take care of everything else. So that's, those are big ones. Um, doing, uh, you know what else is really good for the vagus nerve and really good for parasympathetic? <laughs> Going from, from hot to cold showers, cold plunges, uh, things of that nature. Not everybody's built for that. Not everybody's ready for that. Nobody can handle that and do that. But little things like that do add up over time and can make a very big difference with your body. So start trying some of those. Those are really important things that people can do. Good question. Someone says, I'd like to, I'd like to be more proficient in helping clients navigate their DNA report. Okay. I, you know what? That's let's work more on that. We will definitely work more on that. I will tell you that we have some individuals in our organization that do such a great job explaining the, the genetic reports 
so simply, it's not even funny. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we did a talk just on this. I would encourage you to go back and and look at that talk. I, 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 I've actually gone back and watched that one myself because it was just so good. And I would like to continue to do those conversations as well. Um, but keep it simple. Don't overthink it. The report really explains itself. Um, you know, and that's really, you might need to know a couple little nuances about it, but the report explains itself. And a lot of my doctors, I've taught them, I said, why don't you go, I want you doctor to go and look up every one of these genes. And I want you to just get a little summary on it. And what's interesting is the summary on the genes is really essentially the same summary that's on the report. And the more they research it, the more they look at the report, well, this is really simply written. So we'll do more training on that. Great question. I love that. Someone says, I need to know more about gut health and triads so I can also convince others that they work. Uh, friends have same problems as me and I'm on the supplements and it's working for me. You know, that's a great question. It's a great statement. You know, the, the I learned a long time ago, he or she with the most, he or she with the most certainty wins. I don't know how much more certain you can be because it's working for you. And I'll tell you, people have gut issues, everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody. I'll bet you that 90% of the population has some type of a gut imbalance and all the way from children up to adults and everybody in between. It is, it's the key. So learning how to explain things in terms so simply that people take action, um, that, that's, that is the key. That is absolutely the key. Um, so great question. Someone just asked, uh, is everybody needs this.com getting updated with the new products? Yes. In fact, I was just talking with Robert about uh, when they're going to be making a trip out to St. Louis so we can do some filming on all the rest of those products as well. So we're going to update all that. We have a lot of work to do on the back end for you guys as well. And we're going to get it done in short order. I promise you that. Lots of great stuff going on, but I'm just telling you, uh, we have such a great opportunity right now and especially moving forward, you know, we've got the DNA testing for customized nutrition. We got the gut health. We got the immune products. We got the earth. We got all these things that are out there that helps the body detox, improve, improve overall health. 2023 is going to be an amazing, amazing year for you and for me. And I'm really looking forward to being there to serve you. So whatever I can do to help you, please, 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 please uh, help me help you. Give me information that we can do. And we'll talk about diabetes and arthritis and autoimmune issues and emotional stresses and anxiety. We'll talk more about all of those things in future uh, Wednesday night workshops with me, I promise you. So give me a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed tonight. You guys learned something. We, we excited about 2023 and everything moving forward. I know I am. I hope you are as well. We've got a lot of great stuff going on. And uh, it's so good seeing you guys too. Yes, we can talk about kidney disease. Yes, we can talk about kids with health problems. We can talk about anything. That's what I do. I know how to talk about all those problems. I just need you to get me the information you want so that I can help you get the, the education that you need to help yourself and help other people. So that's all I got for today, ladies and gentlemen. It's so great to see all of you out on social media land as well. Until we meet again, I'm Dr. Eric Naputi. God bless you. God bless America and God bless the world. Love you guys. I appreciate you and I'll see you soon. Be well, everybody. Good night.